We've had these cryptic promos for weeks on NXT. Tonight, it was in the arena itself with a voice. And it would read, truth will ultimately prevail. But there is pain bringing it to light. Now, the lights were obviously off for this. This was during a segment with Ridge Holland in the ring. And then we'd get one spotlight and two shadowy figures, one of which being Ridge. And that shadowy figure hitting Ridge with a steel chair. The reveal was Sean Spears. Note they did call him Sean Spears as well. This is former WWE's Ty Dillinger. He would obviously go to AEW where he would then become the chairman Sean Spears. And I think upon his NXT return to use the steel chair being called Sean Spears still. I think that's still the same gimmick they're going to run with in NXT. This is interesting, man. This is a big big signing for NXT in particular. We'd hear from Sean Spears as he was leaving the NXT arena, simply saying that the pain that Ridge Holland feels is the truth, and the truth can bring you to your knees. He'll see us next week at Roadblock. Could we get Sean Spears versus Ridge at Roadblock? But let me know your thoughts on Sean Spears' NXT return in the comment section down below. This is Things You Might Have Missed from WWE NXT. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. As one NXT mystery is solved, another one pops straight up. We had a beat shot, no people at all, and just simply the words, see you soon. And then a little graphic at the end for NXT Roadblock. I do think though, unlike the other cryptic promo where we had legit no idea who it was, this one may be a little bit more obvious. Internet is buzzing at the prospect that this could be the return of Sol Ruka. Now, I like Sol. I think she's very talented. So very interesting to see if that takes place next week. Obviously, we will be doing things you might have missed for that. So make sure you turn your notifications on so you definitely don't miss it. Gallows and Anderson would actually be in action tonight. Interestingly, they were still announced as the OC rather than the Good Brothers. They would face Blade and Inofe, and they did a really good job selling for them. Now, it would be Gallows and Anderson picking up the win. I have to mention, by the way, Carl Anderson's Spinebuster is just a thing of beauty. Absolutely brutal, quick-whipped Spinebuster. Love it. Chase U would come out to interrupt their celebrations, of course, followed by Nathan Frazier and Axiom. And I like the fact there's a bit of a rivalry to get to the main roster guys because they know that's where the spotlight's going to be. I like that. These teams should be buying for that spotlight. Of course, it would be the LWO attacking Gallows and Anderson. And everyone hates the Good Brothers. Why? They're just good. Even the Wolf Dogs would make their presence felt as the tag team division is heating up. You've got to wonder, the team that actually faces the Wolf Dogs, will they be successful with Brom Breaker being called up? Booker T is back on NXT commentary after a small absence. Honestly, I miss Booker T a lot. It took him one match, by the way, to plug reality of wrestling. Gotta love Booker. Boys, clean your underpants. It's been teased. Ilya Dragunov. Obafemi. This is a match I've seen a lot of people theorizing would happen. Obviously won the North American champion, won the NXT champion. And you know what? This would be like two wrecking balls colliding. I would be all here for this. Who the hell would win it though? After Shotzi's injury last week, Lyra would wish Shotzi well and say to her that when she's back, there is an NXT Women's Championship match awaiting her. But tonight was about the gift for Tatum Paxley. And Tatum was very excited. Let's put it like that. Honestly, man, this is one of my favorite acts in NXT. It's just so entertaining. And we found out the gift next week at Roadblock is a shot against the Kabuki Warriors for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. That's pretty big. And just knowing how WWE works, I don't think it's going to happen. But I think I found the team that I want to dethrone the Kabukis. And I think it's going to be Tatum and Lyra. I hope. They was obviously interrupted by Ridge Holland. Who obviously got beaten up by the chairman, Sean Spears. The only initial reaction so far that I can show you is actually from Cassie Lee, who is Sean Spears' wife. Used to be in WWE under the ring name Peyton Royce. Who simply said, home sweet home. So this is something obviously you can probably say that Sean has wanted to do. Obviously NXT is where he originally was first Bought into the spotlight, so now the spotlight is solely on him. 
Kiana James defeated Kalani Jordan tonight on NXT. Do you know what? I was thinking about this during this match. Okay, Kalani Jordan, I think, has everything to succeed. I think she really needs the presentation of the main roster. I don't think her wrestling ability is bad. Maybe they're still thinking she's young, she's got loads to learn, etc. I don't think she's going to be called up anytime soon. But I feel like everything about her is spot on. Just that presentation tweak that the main roster gives superstars may be all she needs. Roxanne Perez would defeat Jakara Jackson. This was a pretty damn good match, to be fair. I love the transition into the crossface, but I love also the fact they gave it a storyline. Obviously, Roxanne was pissed about Lash. Jakara's Lash's tag team partner. Makes sense for them to clash. Dijak would take on Luca Crucifino tonight. And this was a hard-hitting match, man. There was a spot where Dijak would go over the table. He actually surfed the announce table and landed right at the back of it. But luckily, Vic's candy is okay. Oh my god, it's like, honestly, if they ever come out with a Vic Joseph action figure, they need to bring the little candies with it. They really do, because he always has candy! This match, though, was super hard-hitting. Crucifino got battered by Dijak. After the match, though, after Dijak would win, Crucifino would hit him with a crowbar, and then Joe Gacy would emerge, still in the straight jacket. It's been three weeks, that thing must smell awfully. Somehow Joe Gacy has broken free and he came for revenge on Dijak. And it wasn't just a little bit of a brawl. There was more to this later on in the night. And I really like how they transitioned this to make you forget, OK, that was cool. But now you've got Dijak arguing with Ava. And then the cameraman was Joe Gacy, who would attack Dijak once again, leading to the announcement that next week at Roadblock, an asylum match between Dijak and Gacy. Now, please do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the only Asylum match we've seen in WWE was Dean Ambrose versus Chris Jericho. And if I remember rightly, the match was a banger. So this could be interesting. We know the personal hatred is there between Dijak and Gacy. How does Crucifino now play into that? We're going to find out next week. Jada Parker would defeat Gigi Dolan tonight. She's really trying to make a name for herself. Gigi and Ariana Grace would have like a moment afterwards though with Ariana Grace saying like we need to come together. Charlie Dempsey would capture the NXT Heritage Cup. The roadblock contract signing is what finished the show tonight and this was monumentally big as Tony D'Angelo would interrupt and say he wants a shot at the title at Stand and Deliver. Ilya Dragunov would agree. So next week at Roadblock, we're actually going to get Carmelo Hayes versus Tony D'Angelo. Winner faces Dragunov at Stand and Deliver. This has got to be where Trick Williams returns. Trick is definitely going to screw Melo, isn't he? Oh boy, next week, Roadblock is unmissable. This week, though, was genuinely a great show for NXT. Lots of build, lots of setup as well. The big return of Sean Spears. 9 out of 10 from me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on notifications. Never miss an upload. Definitely don't miss Roadblock next week and I'll catch you next time. Peace!